Yeah. Hi, my name is Janelle Reynolds. I'm the executive chef at Rosedale Kitchen and Bar here in Austin, Texas. I'm happy to be with you today. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make um, our number one bestseller. It's our pan roasted salmon with sweet potato noodles, wilted spinach, carrots, and shiitake mushrooms with a tamari vinaigrette. Um, the sweet potato noodles are made from the starch of sweet potatoes, so it's a really low calorie product. So you can eat del deliciously and healthy at the same time. The first thing I'm going to do is teach you guys how to make the tamari vinaigrette that goes into the noodles. And this recipe is gonna yield about a quart, quart and a half of sauce. And you can easily keep this in your refrigerator and use it on other days, up to 10 days. Um, it's delicious for a salad dressing. You can dress it on roasted vegetables. Um, so lots of good uses for a really delicious sauce. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take two bunches of green onions and I'm just gonna rough chop those. I'm gonna take that, put it in my blender. And then I have one ounce of fresh garlic that I've peeled the skin off of. And we're just gonna rough chop that too. You want it into kind of small pieces so that the blender has a chance to really get that ginger chopped up and puree, puree really well. I'm gonna add that to the blender and then two cloves of peeled garlic. And I'm just gonna take the side of my chef knife and give it a smash. Add that in there as well. And then <clears throat> this is two cups of tamari. Tamari is a gluten-free soy sauce. And so we use that so that anyone that needs to eat gluten-free can still enjoy this dish. I also have three cups of grapeseed oil, and in here are two teaspoons of sesame oil. I choose grapeseed oil with my, most of my cooking because it has a really neutral flavor for making vinaigrettes and sauces, but it also is really great for sauteing with because it has a really high smoke point. So you can get your pan really ripping hot and not risk the oil catching on fire. I'm gonna get noisy for a few minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and get this blending, and then I'm going to slowly drizzle in the oil. But before I do that, I almost forgot an ingredient. This is crucial. This is white miso paste. So I'm gonna take a tablespoon of the white miso paste, add that in as well. And the miso acts as an emulsifying ingredient. If I didn't have the miso in there, then the oil and the tamari would not blend together and it would be a broken sauce. All right, time to make some, some noise. Now I've got this nice, beautiful tamari vinaigrette blended up. You can see it's nice and creamy. And I already have some made. And I keep it in a squeeze bottle so it's really easy for me here at the restaurant to incorporate it into the dish. All right, I'm going to get my salmon out. This is Atlantic salmon. We use five ounce portions. 
and I'm just going to season it with a little bit of kosher salt. For searing off the fish, I like to use cast iron skillets because it gets a really nice, crunchy, crispy exterior, and I'm still able to have the salmon cooked to a nice medium rare on in the center of the fish. I've got my pan down here on my French cooktop, and it's getting nice and hot. You can't see the flames because on a French cooktop, they're all from underneath, and they heat these plates up to about 700 degrees. It's ripping hot right here. This is my grapeseed oil that I was talking about, and I'm going to give a nice coating to the bottom of the pan. And swirl it around just to make sure that the oil is covering the entire surface of the bottom of the pan. And you want to make sure that you have a spatula handy for turning the fish when it's time to flip it over. I also have just a regular stainless steel saute pan. Um, stainless steel is my favorite to cook with because it, it heats really evenly and they're really easy to keep clean. So now that my pan is giving me a little bit of smoke, I know that my fish is ready to go down. Whenever you're dropping a piece of protein into a hot pan with oil in it, you always wanna lay it away from you to prevent any oil from popping back onto your hands or your arms. This salmon is um, Atlantic salmon that we get from Chile. Um, it's 100% sustainable raised um, in open ocean farms. Now that I've got the front side down, I'll season the underneath side with a little bit more kosher salt. looking for a really nice golden brown sear. Anytime you're searing off proteins like this, whether it's a piece of fish or a steak in a pan, pork tenderloin, if you go to lift the protein and it's still sticking to the pan, it's not quite ready to let go and you want to give it a little bit longer in the pan. But what I do is I put this off to the side to let some of the residual heat in the pan continue to let that crust develop. But then I can start working on my side dish without worrying about burning the fish. This is more of that grapeseed oil I was telling you about. And again, we're coating the bottom of the pan. One of the ingredients that I'm going to put in here is sliced shiitake mushrooms. And anytime you put mushrooms in a pan, you really want to give them a chance to get a, a sear. So you want the pan hot because mushrooms naturally give up a lot of water. So if the pan's not hot enough, they're just kind of sweating in the oil and they're not really developing a seared flavor to it, which is what I like. It really brings out kind of the natural earthiness and nuttiness to the mushrooms. Now my oil is just starting to simmer, shimmer, which is what I'm looking for. Little bit of smoke coming off. You see those bubbles around the mushrooms, that's a good sign. That means you're going to get some nice color on them. And I'm going to pull my pan back to me. And if you're you know, cooking on a home burner where you've got open flames and it's individual burners similar to these, you can just lower your heat a little bit. And then you can go ahead and again, turning away from you, flip your fish. See that nice, beautiful golden crust on there? That's going to give some really wonderful texture to your bite of fish. My mushrooms are starting to get some color. You can see that. Next ingredient that I'm going to add is julienne carrots. Got a little here, about a quarter of a cup. And move that around. Because this pan is so hot, those carrots will burn quickly if you don't give them some movement in the pan.
good way to practice that tossing technique. I like to put a piece of toast in the pan and you practice that flipping motion with your piece of toast off the heat and you can practice flipping that toast over and that teaches you that saute motion that you see so many chefs doing. By using the toast, it's giving you the chance to practice the movement without having something hot in the pan where you risk burning yourself. I'm gonna pull that off my high heat for a moment. And this is baby spinach. If you're not comfortable doing that saute flip, that's where your tongs are always gonna come in really handy. I've just wilted the spinach a little bit. I don't want it completely cooked down because I'm gonna add hot noodles on top of it. So I'm gonna pull that off of the heat and I'm gonna pull my salmon off of the heat. We portion our noodles here at the restaurant so that we know that everybody's getting the right amount of noodles. But these are um, the sweet potato noodles. Let me uh, grab a glove. Um, they're made from uh, sweet potato starch and they're really chewy. They're a traditional um, Korean noodle that you're going to find in a side dish in Korea called japchae. And they look kind of like this, but once you add them into the hot water, they get clear. So I've got a pot right here with um, a pasta basket in it. You can use a strainer at home. This is just how I do it at the restaurant because it helps me do it quickly when we're in the middle of service. I'm gonna take my portioned noodles, and this is four ounces of noodles. Add that into my hot water. I'm just gonna let those heat through. They're already cooked. We're just heating them up. Give them a little toss. I'm gonna put my pan back onto the heat. Add my noodles in there. And again, you can either do the saute toss or you can use your tongs. At this point, I'm pulling it off of the stove because these noodles will start to stick if you don't get the liquid in there. I've got my tamari vinaigrette. I'm gonna give it a few good turns. Back on the heat just real quick because the tamari vinaigrette is cold. You hear that sizzle. Nice and hot. I'm gonna take my noodles. So you can see there just a nice big bed of noodles. Color, you've got different texture contrasts with the carrots, soft mushrooms, and the wilted spinach. I'm gonna place the salmon right on top. And then I garnish, these are black sesame seeds, white sesame seeds are fine too. And you can also mix them together to make what we call tuxedo sesame seeds. So it's black and white. And there you have it. There's our pan roasted salmon with sweet potato noodles, shiitake mushrooms, carrots, and wilted spinach. And a pro tip on this dish is if you find yourself getting a little full and you've got some leftover noodles, this makes for a great breakfast the next morning with a fried egg on top. I hope you guys have enjoyed cooking with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I know you guys are a bunch of amazing professional women out there and enjoying your careers. I hope that you're safe. I hope that you're well, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Come see us at Rosedale Kitchen and Bar. Have a great day.